Working in 3D gives you an insane amount of flexibility, creativity, and if you can get these three things right, you'll be an expert at Blender, and get great living and be able to do what you want, when you want. So in this video, I'm gonna take my eight plus years of 3D experience and condense that down into a three part framework that I would follow if I was starting completely from scratch in Blender today. This is the blueprint to starting off right if you have no experience with 3D. And having a concise game plan like this would have saved me loads of time at the beginning. So let's cover these one at a time. All right, level one, get started. If you're starting Blender completely from scratch, it can be like grinding the max cape in old school RuneScape. It's incredibly difficult, extremely time consuming, and it's lonely. This is where most people stop. They open the program, try moving the default cube around, then go back to Doom Scroll and TikTok. It's the first major hurdle you'll come across when starting with Blender. And that is not knowing what the hell anything does. So at this stage, I'd build out a structure, a simple set of goals setting what I want to achieve my first four weeks of Blender. These goals should build on top of each other to one major goal for your first month. And these can be super simple. The goal is to not overwhelm yourself at the beginning. For me, my major goal would be to create one render of a complete scene with textures and an environment. To get that major goal done, this is where I'd set up these sub goals. For example, Goal one, learn Blender's user interface and navigation. Goal two, build out a simple scene with primitive objects. Goal three, learn the basics of modeling and lighting. You get the idea. The main takeaway here is to just get started. Because if you think about it, learning Blender and 3D in general is a high value skill. Having this skill set under your belt opens up so many opportunities and potential career changes that can be life changing. But the first few weeks of learning a new skill are almost always the make or break point for continuing learning or completely giving up. Trust me, I know. <laughs> now, if you're in the stage of level one and you've just completed your first major goal, first off, congratulations. And second off, we now want to repeat this process two more times. Having at least three projects under your belt will not only solidify what you've learned during this time, but it'll also encourage you and inform you if you truly do want to pursue 3D as a career. Trust me when I tell you, you will want to give up, especially if you're starting from scratch, since you probably have a full-time job, maybe even a family to take care of. There's not a lot of time to actually work on this, let alone find the resources to learn from, which is why I'd suggest a curated learning path like a course or a class on Skillshare. You probably know Skillshare for their courses in photography and cooking, but I'm guessing you didn't know they have loads of career-focused classes as well. And in the theme of today's video, they conveniently have a curated selection of Blender classes. I highly recommend checking out Southern Shoddy's array of classes, and more specifically, your first day in Blender 3D. This class will get you up to speed with Blender in roughly 30 minutes, and it's geared towards beginners. Honestly, with Skillshare, no goal is too small as there are plenty of Skillshare teachers like this guy and hey, even me. Skillshare teachers walk you step by step through the process. I've been using their platform for years and it truly is a fantastic way to jumpstart your learning even if it isn't Blender related. Skillshare is sponsoring this video and they've given me an amazing offer for you guys. The first 1000 people to use the link below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Using that link really does help support the channel. It lets me do this whole YouTube thing for free for you. Click that link and thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Right, so you now have three projects under your belt and a basic understanding of 3D. And this is where you have a decision to make. Do you wanna be in a casual relationship with Blender or do you wanna be in a serious relationship with Blender? Bringing it back to that RuneScape analogy, you might be like, all right, I only wanna farm cows and lumbridge. This is the level I'm happy with and I just wanna hear the cow death sound effect. If that's you, I totally get it. But if you're a serious gamer, you wanna reach that max cape. And this is where we move to level two, get good. This is the stage where I would actively and consciously decide I want to get serious about learning Blender and I'm going to make one project per week. Because to me, 
that's take kids seriously. You can't build out the necessary skills to create a name for yourself or build a career in 3D if you don't have the body of work to show for it. So from here on out, I'd be making one project per week for at least three months. That's gonna bump your total projects from three all the way to 15. And with level two, its focus is get good. But I put it to brackets enough because the point of making all these projects is to get good at the craft of 3D. There's so many skills that go into becoming an effective 3D artist. There's lighting, modeling, animation, rigging, texturing, compositing, rendering. The list of skills to learn is crazy long. And again, this model, we're starting from scratch. I don't know how to do any of this yet. So during this time, I'd be focusing on actively trying to improve my projects and the general craft of 3D. The first week could be solely about nailing the lighting on the default cube. The second week could be creating a procedural texture and understanding the texture workflow. These aren't major projects and they certainly won't be going on our portfolio, but they're still honing the crafts and getting 1% better with each project. And by the way, you don't need to worry about your career skill set or your niche yet. These are just projects to get you in the game, get good at the craft of 3D, and ultimately find what you enjoy most. Again, back to that RuneScape analogy. This is like trying different skill grinds. Maybe you really love Fletching, but absolutely hate Hunter. And across these 15 projects, not only are you getting good at the craft of 3D and Blender, but you're also learning about yourself and what you enjoy doing most. Let me tell you, enjoyment plays a massive role in this whole framework. And once you've passed level two, you need to ask yourself the ultimate question. And that is... Are you a hobbyist or are you a business? If you've made it past level two, you should be able to answer that pretty quickly. The simplest way to answer it is to just throw it on a scale from one to 10. If you're leaning towards the hobby side, that's totally fine. But if you do want to push this further into a business, then this is where we move to level three, which is get serious. So at this stage, I have 15 projects under my belt. They're all over the place, but this is where I'd want to build out a very specific skill set that I know inside and out. Something I can slowly dominate and confidently say, I am X or I am Y. This is my thing and I'm really good at it. For example, if this were me and I could go back in time, product animation and product rendering would be my niche. It pays ridiculously well I'm comfortable with it, and there's loads of clients looking for this service. So once you have your ideal niche in mind, there are three steps to success. Step one is build, and this is where I'd start building a high quality portfolio of works. Remember, the past 15 projects were just getting good at the craft of 3D. Now I'd want to put that to the test and create three hyper-focused projects of my best quality work inside the niche that I've chosen. These will be to showcase my skill set and what I have to offer potential clients or employers. Which brings us to step two, land. Once I have at least three projects that I'm happy with, I'd start the process of lead gen. I know this is getting kind of technical, but stick with me, it's not as difficult as it sounds. Lead gen is just a simple term for outreach or connecting with potential customers. So with that in mind, I'd be cold emailing and DMing local businesses, brands, heck, even ad agencies. The worst you can get is a no, and trust me when I tell you, you're gonna get plenty of no's. The key to step two is to not get discouraged, and more importantly, do this at scale. If you're DMing three brands and saying, Smeef, this isn't working. I gotta pump those numbers up. Those are rookie numbers in this racket. The good metric I use is to just assume a 2% conversion rate. And in the case of landing clients, to get the ball rolling, I'd start with outreaching to 100 potential customers per month. Now, I know that sounds insane, but again, you're assuming a 2% conversion rate. So out of the 100 people, you may only land two of them. And if you're just starting out, landing your first client is almost always the hardest part. But once you do land them, this brings us to step three, which is network. Networking is probably the most powerful tool when it comes to the business side of 3D. It's what allows for repeat business and it expands your potential clientele almost exponentially. So once I've made it to this stage, I'd reach out to the clients I've just finished work with and send them a simple DM. Something like, hey, 
Thanks for working with me. Do you happen to know anyone else needing my services? If so, do you mind passing my info along? Thanks much and looking forward to working with you in future. Best, Smeef. You don't have to overthink this part. Nine times out of 10, they will know someone and they will refer you to them. And this is the power of effective networking. You can get repeat business from a tight knit community of brands and it'll get to a point where you have too many people wanting your service. This then allows you to refer them to other 3D artists in your community, or even expand your business further with subcontracting or employees, but that's a whole nother video in and of itself. Now, all of this is a great blueprint, but there's actually a secret bonus level that not only helps you earn 10 times more with 3D, but it fixes the number one problem I see almost every freelance artist make. If you'd like to learn how to fix that, you'll want to watch this video right here.